Okay, well, hopefully it'll be an interest and try to make it very practical. So I'm hoping to see people scribbling the notes and taking action items because that's one way to make it as practical as possible. Uh, yeah, I do get involved in digital transformation. One of the most interesting projects we're working on is Digital That Delivers. It's a project we're working with 200 companies with Folge Ireland. And it's digital transformation for the entire tourism and attraction industry. So we're like uh, managing the building of seven to 800 websites. Uh, we're doing content marketing programs. We're replacing booking engines for the entire industry with a couple of companies. We've done about 150 websites, managed them over the last year and a half, and we're just starting a program now about 200 other websites. So it's quite a large program, and as part of that, we're doing a lot around AI and see how we can use AI as well as part of it. So, uh, so I'm a digital transformation specialist. That's a nice title, isn't it? Huh? Is that bad? Huh? My mother would be proud, wouldn't she? <laughs> so. It's a very, yeah, yeah, it's a bit, it's very, sustainable. exactly. Yeah. It's sustainable. I don't know, who knows, who knows. Uh, and by the way, I love traveling, so that's one of my things, I love traveling. And that's one of the reasons I speak, I get to travel. Now, I only came from the north side today, which is out by the airport, but uh, I do like traveling. This is, this is in Jordan. It was in Jordan, yeah, yeah. And my sons were delighted to come with me. Once daddy is paying, they will always come. So, so that's, that's the trick. That, that's it. Exactly, exactly. So, okay, I found this very, quite interesting chart of the S&P 500 index in the US with the top 500 companies. This is showing the growth, including technology companies. This is showing the growth without technology companies. There has been no growth like the first half of last year with non-technology companies and similar to the second half. Really what you're seeing is there's huge investment going into AI. So technology companies are really starting to benefit because of AI and they're starting to share price is starting to rocket up. Where we're looking at a breakdown of AI, we're looking at uh, really, we're talking about generative AI today. And generative AI is about when we're creating content, which is really interesting. It's a great opportunity for us all. But AI is the broad field of artificial intelligence. And within that, you've got machine learning where AI is starting to get a lot smarter, where it's actually been able to uh, figure out things as well. So learn from what it's doing. And, and that's really, uh, you know, that's a real growth area. And deep learning is where it's actually getting really deep. This is like acting like a brain now. And you can do things like, you know, recognize and understand imagery and stuff like that. But generative AI is where we're going to spend most of our time talking today. So like the chat GBT and stuff is generative AI. So I've just sent from an AI maturity model, where are you guys, where do you sit in the AI maturity model? Are you falling behind? And I'd say at this stage, if you're just experimenting, dabbling and implementing something, you're starting to fall behind. So really what you want at this stage is have a strategy, a clear strategy for AI in your business and start looking at innovation. Because AI is all about innovation and this is a great opportunity for us to innovate. So really you should be over on the right instead of the left. I assume you all are. Let's see. Uh, people that use AI as part of their work will replace people that don't. Uh, I found that on the internet, so it must be true. So, I, I did, so it's definitely true, it's on the internet. What all this means is, is you have to incorporate AI as part of your workflow. Really important for everyone here in the room. You use tools already. Use social media tools. Use a content management tool. Uh, you, you use SEO tools. You use these tools already. Just add AI tools on. It's not replacing people. It's just going to support your work. So just don't be afraid of adopting it and bring it in as part of your workflow. Uh, the people that don't will struggle because you will not be able to be, compete with people that are using some of these tools. And I'm not saying that AI writes your content and does all that. It does support it though. It, it does provide you help with research. It provides help maybe improving your content, improving the grammar of your content, adding some ideas for your content. So there's lots of practical uses, but you're still, the quality content is still going to be important. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have 15 tools, tips, and techniques. Interact with your audience in 94 languages. So ChatGPT supports 94 languages. Um, we talk about having a chatbot on your website. Now you can have an AI chatbot on your website. Now what the AI chatbot does, it indexes all your content on your website. So if you've got good content on your website, that's available to the chatbot, and somebody can interact and ask questions. But in the tourism area, how come we don't have our you know, a sites in many different languages because it's quite costly to do. So this is taking a huge amount of cost out of this. So for example, this is just a bungee jumping in New Zealand. So I'm asking here in my brilliant Spanish, I think that's correct, I don't know, 
uh, what is the price? And this is the answer I get. This is the answer I get. But this New Zealand bungee company also supports Irish, Tade and Frogus. So it also supports Irish as well. There you go, exactly. So we're, we're now, we have 94 languages available to this site. You know, as a tourism business, they're going to generate much higher conversion from an international audience because now they're able to answer in the language of choice. And it's proven actually, Yonder is the chatbot. So if you want to have a look at Yonder as a, a, an AI chatbot to see, they said that our conversion was 13% and it went up to 23%. So like an 80% increase in conversion just because they added in the AI component to the chatbot. So they were using it already, but now it's rapidly gone up because of AI. So really have a look at the chatbot AIs, AI tools because they're really beneficial and it does open up your site to many, many different languages. Uh, if you want to have a look at a, an AI chatbot on a travel site on Lithuania Travel, they have the option of not using AI or using AI, and it's good to, to test it out, have a look. Create videos in many languages. So I was, uh, I was sharing a message with my niece over WhatsApp, and I was just messing, so I shared it in Spanish. Now, I don't speak Spanish at all, but what I use is one of the AI tools to translate it to Spanish. So take a video, take it in English, and translate it to whatever language you want. But what it does, it makes it so believable because it does all the lip syncing and everything. So, so this is me. Now, I don't speak a word of Spanish, so I don't even know what it says now at this stage, but. Olvidé responder a tu mensaje sobre el desayuno del próximo sábado por la mañana. That's where you, you, you get the message. So what it does is it lip syncs and everything. So that was perfect, yeah, yeah. That is scary now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that's, it does that in 40 different languages. Now you think, oh, that's freaky. Can you believe that online anymore? Probably not. But, but if you have a, a reputable site online and you've got videos, you can easily go, do you want to hear this in French, German, Spanish, Japanese, Italian, or whatever, click a button. So if this is bringing this uh, translation to a whole new audience to you for like very little cost. These tools like are, you know, 20, $30 a month sort of thing. And what these tools do is record on the main language, uh, change it to 40 languages, and then you can proofread it. So for example, if it's 95% correct, you could get a Japanese speaker to go in, and what, all you have to do is type in the text and it'll adjust the video. So there's no re-recording -re video and re-recording voices or anything like that. You just adjust the text and it will, it will change it all in whatever language. So if you said, well, it had to be 100% perfect, well then you would have a, a, a native speaker that would go through this process. If you said 95% is okay, well then you wouldn't have to do it. So that's up to you. So these tools are available. This is called HeyGen, H-E-Y-G-E-N. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, and that will provide it in, in many languages. It's your voice, or it's just anyone's voice. You use your own, your own voice. Yeah, so it, it takes a sampling of your own voice and then it actually does it from the existing video. So creating audio from, from text. So there's a guy called Mark Schaefer who is a, an influencer in the digital marketing space. Uh, Mike would have met him at different conferences as well. A very, very well-known guy. He's w well known. His voice would be well known. He speaks a lot of different events and uh, he wanted to do a podcast, but he had a, a sore throat, so he couldn't do the podcast. So he said that he created his podcast. He called it the freakiest podcast ever. I've also lost my voice. My dilemma is this. I am now in the 11th year of this podcast and I've never missed an episode. Nearly 300 episodes without a miss. I now don't have a voice to record my podcast episode. And frankly, I don't have the energy to do it anyway. How am I going to keep the show going? when all I want to do is go back to bed and sleep. I needed to come up with something creative, and I have. And depending on how you look at it, this is either the most creative podcast episode you've ever listened to, or the most terrifying. Okay, so what's that, that doing is, that wasn't him speaking. That's just taking text and creating the podcast. So now, whatever text you have, you can say, well, I want to create a podcast from all the text, and it'll automatically create it. So he just happened to have a sore throat. And he's, like you said, he's been doing that for 11 years. The first time he couldn't do the podcast and uh, he used a tool called 11 Labs. I think I have it there in the corner. Uh, 11labs.io. 
and that allows you to do that, you know, quite simply. So, so this has taken your text and creating to, to voice. But using his timbre and voice. Yeah, so it takes a sample. Yeah, it takes a sampling of his voice and then uses that, you know. So. And then came up with content as well. No, he, he had the content, so he had all written out the content. Yeah, so he, he didn't. Now, it, it could, but I mean, the thing is, he is not going to do that. He's not going to use an AI tool just to produce all the content, even though he can. Because people, you will get found out eventually, because AI is not perfect. And we talk about AI hallucinations. It yeah. makes up stuff at times. MagEye is a, an interesting tool. So we talk about large language models. And that's basically when people are, are you know, ChatGPT, it costs a fortune because it takes so much information, it processes so much information, and it's costly on the servers and all that sort of stuff. So that's a large language model. Well, there's many of these different large language models, and you don't want to try them all out yourself. It just takes so much time. What this does is it brings them all together in one area. Uh, for example, it has GBT, but it also has Claude. Claude, for example, is not released in Europe yet, but you can access Claude through this tool. So, th so what this does here, in the bottom right corner says auto usage. Use the best AI model based on your prompt. So when you use your prompt, it will actually pick the most relevant AI large language model to use in terms of for, for providing answers. So instead of just using ChatGPT, you get access to a lot more as well. Uh, and also what it does is it, it specifies different personas. So it says, oh, I'm a journalist. So when I'm interacting, give me answers as if I'm a journalist, or give me answers as if I'm a marketing expert or a tech writer. There's loads of different personas you can use uh, for, for getting access to the content. And that gives you better answers when you you're, uh, you know play one of these personas. So a useful tool if you want to test out different uh, you, you know, large language models like, different than ChatGPT, and you want to test out things like Claude and stuff like that, which, like I said, is not even available in, in Ireland yet. Uh, neural voice is just an interesting one. Now it's like we're going to be speaking to people more online, and you can see people do more voice search and stuff now. That's becoming you know, increasingly important. A lot of people text messages using voice as well. So neural voice here is, uh, if you go to neuralvoice.ai, you speak to Emily. So instead of interacting with a chatbot, you speak to Emily. And Emily will go off and find out, you know, what, what you need. You know, it can be Emily does various characters. So you'll see this start popping up on lots of different websites, these type of characters on the websites, because you can have full conversations. I was listening to a conversation the other day uh, with Tesla Motors, where it was a sales guy talking to somebody, and it was, it was all AI. And I'm saying, oh, I've seen you were on the website. I've seen you were downloading this brochure. Are you interested in this? You, and it was a full 10 minute conversation using this. So the technology is there for that now. So if I've a person talks to Emily and you know, asks about the cheapest flight from Dublin to Cape Town on a certain date, so Emily goes off and finds out. And uh, what neural voice, they haven't integrated Amadeus yet, but they're doing this at the moment. Uh, so this will get real time flight information. So Emily will provide you know, the real time flight information. So it's just interesting that's starting to appear and that will pop up on more and more websites as well. And they'll do more of these integrations so you'll be able to get real-time information through it. And this is probably more likely how younger people in particular will interact as true uh, people online. Uh, convert video to text. So um, I'm not going to play all of Michael's video, but Michael's video just on this, the, the Meet the Media. <laughs> Meet the Media 2024 will take place in Dublin on Wednesday, the 7th of February, 2024. So what I did with this tool, uh, sitespeak.ai, is taken Michael's video and then create a post about it. Well, what's interesting is it doesn't just transcribe the post. It creates an article about it. So it does a professional introduction. It says what to expect, what respect, what's the, date, the details, the date, the venue, the event hours, details. Now, this may be like 80% towards a post that Michael could have put on his website. So you can take the video content you have. If you've got a lot of video content and you want to get some of that video content in the posts, you can do this with, with this tool. And then you can go back in and update it and change it. Well, you could be 80% there. You know? So I'm not saying to automate. You know, there will be issues when you hear here. But it does a very good job of actually structuring a good piece of content from that. And what's interesting is it's not just not just tra transcribing what you're saying, it's actually coming up an article that's well structured and stuff as well. So get ChatGPT to analyze your copy and compare with your competitors. So you can, for example, take your homepage 
take that copy and com com uh, copy it in, and then it will do analysis of that. So for example, I just picked a, a tour operator and talks about the promotion of the page, does a, a, a commendable job of highlighting various attractions and everything. Then it breaks down all the areas that are on that, and then it gives detailed analysis of each section within the page. So just to get a, an analysis of copy on your site and go, is this good enough? Who am I targeting? Am I targeting the right person? Do I have the right content? Is there gaps in my content? Or what you can do is then I, I took two tour, tourism providers and a copy that were competitors and I copied both their copy in. And then it does a breakdown analysis in terms of what the theme and focus is. You know, they mentioned about sustainability, culturally and, and culinary emphasis across both of them. So you really get a, a feel for, well, what are you missing? What's different about you? You know, are you missing sections on your website? Are you more competitive than others? So increasingly it'll be useful for doing that analysis around the competitor side of things. Uh, if you're writing blog content, you may have come across SEM Rush is a an SEO tool for optimizing content and driving more traffic. But they have brought in a, a load of different features in that tool to help you create blog content. This is just research from a friend of mine in Orbit Media, Andy Crestodino. He does this annual research with about a thousand bloggers. And it's just about, well, what are they using for AI? And you can see generating ideas is 43%. That's the, the biggest one where people are going, I'm struggling with an idea for content. Give me some ideas. And you can see there sometimes writing headlines, writing outlines, writing first drafts. Writing complete drafts is 3%. So, you know, generally it's the reputable people that are creating content are not creating complete drafts with that. You, you will get found out with that. And I know nobody in this room is interested in that, but the people that do this will get found out. We'll have lots of spammers creating thousands and thousands of articles that are just pure AI articles, and they will get found out. And Google will over time start blocking them and stuff as well. So quality content pays out. Uh, and there's 35% don't use AI at all, which is surprising at this stage. So they're not even experimenting or using at this stage, which is strange. So that tool, the SEM Rush AI Writing Assistant, allows you to create you know, blog posts, a paragraph blog post, uh, test headlines. It will analyze the content for an SEO perspective and make suggestions. It will come up with titles and descriptions and blog ideas. So there's a whole range of tools in there. Uh, and there's a certain amount for free as well that you can use. So that's the SEM Rush AI Writing Assistant. Uh, create social media images using Firefly. So there's lots of different tools available for creating images. I find Firefly particularly good. These are AI generated images. So which is a bit freaky. <laughs> so these are all just pure AI. So the tools are getting better and better. And what's interesting about Firefly, there's been talk about uh, some of the other tools. They're crawling the internet and taking images. And they might have copyright images issues because they're using images to generate other images variations. That's not going to happen with Firefly. So they, on the left, you see the Adobe stock imagery and copyright free imagery. So they're using, they've got millions and millions of Im their own imagery and then copyright free imagery they're using. They're, that's all the, the images they're using. So any images they produce, there's no issue. And actually, they will confirm that you will not get sued or anything for any of their images. They'll indemnify you against that as well because they know where they're getting it from. Photorealistic images, vector graphics, or design templates have produced it. So it's a really useful tool to try. And there is a free version that you can use as well with Firefly. Uh, it's really useful for summarizing data, uh, I find as well. If you, you know, there's a long list of reports and stuff that you, you want to summarize. You can, like, this was just looking at electric cars. And I just paste in the content for electric cars and asked it to summarize in the table. So this is the summary just from a, a post. So you get a real snapshot of stuff. So it really is good for research and summarizing. So you can read reports quicker. You can get through quant content quicker. Uh, so that's for summarizing it. Then it can also, as well, create graphs and stuff as well based on that content. Uh, and it can take one step further and create full reports. So if I say I want an executive summary, I want charts in there, I want graphs in there, I want all the sections, and I want a summary at the end, it's going to create that. Now, I'm not creating reports to distribute. What you might want to do is just create reports for yourself. So you're doing research on the industry. So you want to get a summary. And, and this is really good at doing that analysis and summarizing a lot of content. Sorry, this one for summarizing data is uh, that's going into ChatGPT. Once you have the paid version of ChatGPT, you can do that. So there's a free and a paid version. The paid version does allow you to 
get out a lot more functionality in it. So, um, and this is the type of report you can produce as well. Uh, this is a really interesting one. This is where we're going. Uh, this is where we're going in terms of creating your own version of GBT. So this is using your own content to create an AI tool. So an example would be New York Travel Guide. What New York Travel Guide is, they put in all their content, all their own content, and now anybody can go in and ask questions through this. So you'll see this popping up in all different travel organizations. You'll see it people in solicitors, practice, and lawyers and all will only have their own custom versions using their own content. So this is where you'd use in tourism related examples. Uh, destination focus for customers, you provide a chatbot that's taking all your content from different sources and using it. You might have a marketing focus for internal employees where you, you take all your campaign data, all your internal processes, all your processes, procedures, everything gets put into this, your personal chatbot and then it's used internally. Or for example, you might go influencer focus for a specific audience, an influencer uploads all their content and then somebody can interact with that. This is going to be a, a big growth area where you, you have your custom uh, GBT uh, and what's fed in is your website, documents, videos, podcasts, and also you can ex get external data from other sources as well. And now you can actually have your own version basically. And this is a, an interesting tool where if you were an influencer, you, you, what you could do is you could search your name on Google and put in the, the, the links in, in here and using them links will create your own custom GBT. So you can say, crawl your website, put all the content to your website, put all the content where you appeared on other articles or whatever, put that all in and create your, your custom version of GBT. A simple uh, tip is uh, when you're writing, act as a travel writer, act as an expert, act as a traveler. When you're interacting, tell it you're an expert if you want expert uh, knowledge back. So you act as something, you know. Uh, use your content to create content. You go back over some of your old content, uh, and, and then you can go, oh, generate me some social media posts based on the own co content. So you can use it just to go back over and start looking at new content you want to produce based on some of your old one. AI, AI ads, so this tool, adcreative.ai, helps you to create all your ads. So it'll automatically create like a thousand different version of ads. It'll create all your social posts. So you can t put in your initial data and it'll do analysis and then it will create all the ads. Then you can run the ads and pick the best one. So it just speeds up the whole process of ad testing. You want to test lots of different variations as well. It's a really useful tool. Uh, adcreative.ai. Uh, it's, it's on that yeah, at the end, so. Yeah, I'll share the presentation as well. So two minutes left. So uh, there's some of the things to watch out for. We, have, we talk about large language models. Now we're going to have small language models where people are going to come up with a smaller set of data focused on specific, specific areas. The custom GBTs, as I talked about, that's going to be a big growth area. Um, multimodal advancements, this is where video, voice, that's going to continue to develop and grow. Ethical, responsible, controlled AI, there will be more legislation around AI. I think it's needed. I think we all think it's needed. And that will definitely come in. So there will be restrictions in there. And continuous learning and adoption from, adoption from ourselves and from the models are going to continue to learn and improve. So I don't think AI is something you should sit back and go, you know, I don't agree with it or I shouldn't be involved in it. It, it should be part of your daily workflow. It should support and help your work. It should be able to reduce the amount of work you do, and it should give you a competitive advantage by investing it. And if I haven't convinced you, uh, maybe Bob Dylan will. Times are changing. Okay, you get it, you get it, you get it. So thank you very much, everybody. And